Link, you are the light, our light, that must shine upon Hyrule once again. Now go. That right there is a truly amazing opening cutscene. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was released in 2017 as an open world action adventure game. It was developed by Nintendo and directed by Hidemaro Fujibashi. And the most buck wild thing about this entire development process is that it was the launch game for the Nintendo Switch. It was the only game that came out with that system. How, Nintendo? Like, what the fuck, you're making us all look bad. Some call this game a masterpiece, and one of the greatest games of all time. Now, when I initially got this game, after the first four or so hours, I dismissed it. I put it down and didn't pick it up for a whole year. But now, it is one of my favorite games of all time. It is now my pleasure to show you how this game accomplished such a feat. Welcome to Hall of Fame, welcome to Breath of the Wild. Before I get too far into this video, I'd just like to acknowledge two videos that inspired me not only to play Breath of the Wild again, but also to make this video. The first of which was Nakey Jakey's video on the world of Breath of the Wild, and the second being GameScore Fanfare's video on the music within Breath of the Wild. They're both amazing creators, and their videos are great, so go show them some love and watch their stuff. So, as per my last Hall of Fame video, I'll be separating this game into three main components to demonstrate why this game is so flippin' fantastic. The first of which is... How do I say this without sounding like a bloody year 12 English teacher? Discovery in Breath of the Wild can be boiled down into unlimited potential. There is so much to be done in this world, so many people to be saved, so many items to obtain, and the game just gives you all the mechanisms, all the abilities right at the start that you're able to do this in any order that you want. Go out and explore the world, find all the shrines, become more powerful, whatever you want to do, you want to survive, there's survival mechanics, you can, you want to be a chef, you can be a chef, there are so many great things to do in this game, and it shows you them from the get-go, but also leaves some of them to be found on your own, like, for instance, it shows you the power of the spirit orbs to help you survive better in this wasteland, I guess, I would define Breath of the Wild probably as post-post-apocalypse. Like, the world has managed to restore itself a bit after the initial cataclysm. 
But anyway, so the spirit orbs are used to increase your health so you can survive better. But there's like implementations of different mechanics. So like if you light a bit of grass on fire, you can fly up. There's like an updraft created as a result. So you can create different sword play opportunities as a result. It's amazing. And it's because of this unlimited potential that Breath of the Wild can hold your attention for 50 to 100 to 1,000 hours. There's just so much to do and you want to do it all and the game encourages you to do it all in whatever order you want. There's no hand-holding. This is the Zelda game that treats you like a smart person. It makes you feel smart by completing all its different challenges. And that is why I like it so much. Music has always been a huge part of the Legend of Zelda series, albeit the original Legend of Zelda's opening theme, Ocarina of Time's many absolute bangers, or some of the newer titles like Skyward Sword. They all have their own unique themes and songs relating to those themes. But none have gone off the bleeding track like Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild totally changed the standard for Legend of Zelda music. And what they did was just add more silence. As you're cruising around the landscape, climbing up things, you just hear more nature sounds. You're exploring, you're hunting, you're discovering new places. And the game lets you do this just with the ambient sound of the wild. Sure, every now and then there might be a little piano sting, like a nice little doo-doo-doo, but it allows you to focus on what you want to do, what this little tree boy wants to do. He's trying to figure out what the fuck happened over the last 100 years, and the music reflects this as the composers took classic themes like the Temple of Time theme and the Hyrule Fields theme and broke them down into their base components and then created totally new sort of dissonant versions of those songs and they're so good like when you walk into the Temple of Time for the first time and you hear that song you realize something is totally wrong that link failed that the reason he, he's been asleep for the last 100 years is because he lost to Ganon. And clearly, Link laments that. And so, as Link explores the Hyrule Fields, there's no heroic music. He's not on some horse. He's not riding around like just crazy green guy. He's just... He's mourning, essentially. And the music perfectly reflects this theme. Like I said before, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is set in a post-post-apocalyptic world because the world has been given a bit of time to recover even though they're still being bombarded by Ganon's evil forces. It's clearly a world that needs fixing and the music perfectly fits that theme and in my opinion is some of the best music in any Zelda game. The element of memory is the thing that brings the whole of Breath of the Wild together for me, that makes it so fantastic, because it integrates discovery, it integrates the music, and brings the whole story together and makes a more complex and compelling story than I thought ever was possible in a Zelda game. So, Link was asleep for a hundred years, and he wakes up in this dystopian world where Ganon won. 
How on earth do you tell the story when it's been a over a hundred years? The story of Breath of the Wild is not told through wild exposition or the story missions, really. I mean, the story missions give you a goal, but that's not where the true story of Breath of the Wild lies. It lies in the world. It lies in your ability to discover your own past, which then unlocks these amazing cutscenes that give you a better idea of what you were like a hundred years ago, resulting in a truly deep story for what seems on the surface to be a fairly traditional Legend of Zelda game. But alongside this emotional driving force for Link and you as the player, you also get to see it firsthand. You see the distrust from people all over the, the map that you failed them and they don't trust you as a result. And so you have to earn their trust by being the hero that they needed a hundred years ago. Each memory adds on to this expectation and when that expectation was failed the result was Ganon winning but when you finally live up to that expectation and you become the hero you're meant to be that's when the game's at its best that's when you've well, that's when it's evolved past the previous Legend of Zelda games and that's why it's most people's favorite game it's because of its effective storytelling through not only cutscene and flashback but through discovery and the music. Silence again for Lament. This factor brings the whole game together. And that, my friends, is why The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is one of my favorite games. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode.